What's going on guys and welcome back to the Good Old Boys channel. So today you're looking at my little aluminum trailer that I made for my Hawk 250. We'll take a quick look at the trailer. The tongue of the trailer is aluminum. We've recycled a couple boats. So that's actually exactly what this is, is recycled um, boat railing. You can see I have a couple stanchions. Those also came from the boat. So it's pretty simple under here. Everything. The undercarriage is bolted on. Actually, everything's bolted on. And this is a car uh, luggage rack or carrier rack. So if I really wanted to, I could unbolt the tongue, unbolt the rear axle, and you'd have what you had before, which is just a car carrier. What we have is a couple axles welded on either side to this piece of metal. Uh, the axles came out of a mower front end. Again, something we recycled. So it's pretty simple, just a couple pieces of square tubing, some round tubing that I bent flat and bolted to the bottom, and a couple triangulation points there where I've just added some support. This trailer, I want to mention too, it's good for 50 or 100 pounds. So the two things I had to actually pay for here are the rack and the wheels and tires here. So the wheels and tires I got from Harbor Freight. They're the no skid mark wheels and tires. Um, I got these just because they're the only ones they have that aren't already in some kind of a carrier. So they're a little cheaper. Uh, plus the rubber feels really good on these. Alrighty guys, so I got a couple gas cans strapped up onto the trailer behind the Hawk here. So they're empty now, but we're going to the gas station to fill them up. So this is gonna be the first true test of the trailer with a load on it in the next video clip the cans are actually full i totally forgot to take a video at the gas station but one thing you guys are going to notice is that i'm actually swerving the hawk 250 back and forth so if you look at the handlebars you can see me working the handlebars back and forth and all i'm doing is testing the trailer making sure it doesn't have any bad tendencies and spoiler alert the trailer is actually really good built really well and as soon as I stop swerving with the handlebars, the trailer straightens right out. guys we got a mower to pick up from my buddy Garrett's house so let me just get this hawk trailer out of here that's right very nice and light
hit that corner pretty fast. Yeah, it doesn't feel bad. I mean, if you swerve it around, it doesn't feel good, but it oh. doesn't feel bad. We found a weak point. I don't know if we should be towing mowers, which is, <laughs> is never meant for this much weight, but it's also bending a little here. So we need to put a little bit of a uh, support across there and <laughs> new, new hitch here, but no biggie. <laughs> That's a rig right there, buddy. So the last you guys saw, we had a little issue with the tongue of the trailer. So we'll take a look at that real quick. So you guys can see I have the tongue removed here. And as you can see from the video, the tongue is all bent up. It was just too light and cheesy. So I've already removed it from the trailer with four uh, bolts. That's all that held it on there. And I've got some new material here that we're gonna make a tongue out of. So let's get to it. So guys, this is the tongue of our trailer here. I went ahead and took it back off the trailer and painted it up. And I'll tell you, this is a whole lot sturdier than what was on here before. So I am gonna go ahead and put some plastic spacers under each of these. Obviously they'll react to each other. So if you put a piece of plastic between the metal and the aluminum, it will prevent it from corroding. Alrighty guys, so this is the trailer with the tongue on it. As you can see, I put the plastic barrier in between the aluminum, the aluminum and the metal. So the trailer is completely set. Now, of course, uh, as you guys saw earlier in the video, the actual hitch needed some repairs as well. So I'm just going to do a quick, simple repair on that. Alrighty guys, so this is the hawk side of the hitch. Now our issue was right here where I cut this U-shaped piece of metal out where the uh, axle bolt goes across the hawk back there. So uh, what I had to do here was you can see the fresh welds and the new piece of metal. Um, it's just a very small piece of angle iron that I welded on top of and over the problem area. It's a lot stiffer now and a lot more durable, but uh, we're going to be coming at you guys with some more content and some more towing with the Hawk 250, so stick around. Alrighty guys, so on the camping trip, we got a flat just on the last leg of the journey home. So you guys can see here, I have a hole in the tube. So this is where all the air and slime was leaking out. So you can see the cords from the tire poking out of this little hole here. So we got a hole on the tire there. What happens here is if you guys take a look at this, you can see where there's kind of a dip in the rubber right here. Uh, so as this thing is spinning around, the slime will gather here and it will actually start poking out like this. So I want to clarify here really quickly what slime actually is. So it's actually tire or tube sealant and it comes in many forms. So slime is just a brand of uh, tire sealant and there's many other brands of tire sealant. So any liquid tire sealant will do what I'm about to explain to you guys here. Now, of course, this is my finger but uh, the centrifugal force from the slime will poke out. And if you have a thin spot or weak spot in the tire, it will uh, 
poke a hole through there just from the pressure of the slime. I think our solution is just gonna be slower speeds, uh, less slime, and cross our fingers and hope we get a better tire. To add to the list of things here, of course, we got some bearings that are not very high quality at all. Of course, these are just the bearings that came in these wheels from Harbor Freight. So we do need to figure out a solution to these crappy bearings. Now I have some spares here, as you can see, which I got, uh, which will probably be needed. Now this right here is an example of how tight one of these bearings is um, that's new. And of course you can see this is halfway out of this hub. So nobody ever congratulated Harbor Freight on the quality of their items. Okay guys, so this is what the Harbor Freight bearing looks like. Keep this image in mind here because the next clip we're going to have some new better quality bearings. So I got a little side note here. Uh, the Hawk 250 trailer, the reason why I'm trying to find the best tires and wheels for it as well as the best bearings is obviously for longevity. I don't want to have to replace the whole tire and wheel every 50 or 100 miles. Uh, and the second thing is I've noticed when you get a flat or you have a low tire or you have bad bearings or even loose bearings, the trailer likes to sway back and forth. So a key point here to keeping this trailer safe is to have uh, good tires and wheels as well as nice tight bearings. So I got the new bearings in and as I promised, you guys are looking at some brand new bearings. Alrighty guys, so first thoughts here on these bearings, you can see the size and stuff. Uh, same exact bearings as these. So don't let these fool you. They look high quality, but they're really not. Um, now I will say this material, the inner and outer race has to be better material than what the Harbor Freight is made out of. So next we're gonna test these out in the wheel here. Yep, it looks like they're gonna be a nice tight fit. Now I wanna crack these open. And my idea here is to take the back of this rubber seal off of here, off of the bearing. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna have a bearing in each side, obviously. So the center hub here, I'm gonna fill with grease. And uh, so there'll be no need for this back seal anyways. Uh, and that'll allow the grease to get into the, the bearing a lot easier. Okay, pops out pretty easy nothing really to it you can see they have grease in there at least but it is pretty crappy grease we're gonna put these bearings in these hubs grease them put them on the trailer last thing left to do is test it out So I ended up putting about 50 miles on the new bearings and tires. Everything held up real well. Now I do want to put a little safety message in the video here. So there's rules and guidelines to follow if you're gonna make a Hawk 250 trailer. Now I don't recommend anybody making a motorcycle trailer. Hauling a trailer behind a truck is sketchy at best if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm gonna put a couple quick screenshots up here on the screen for you guys to read through. Uh, if you're going to go down this adventurous Hawk 250 trailer making road. So here you go. So now for a couple questions that I know you guys are going to have. So why in the world would you want a Hawk 250 trailer? So 
For me, originally, the plan was to make a trailer so I could go camping with uh, my instant tent. It just makes things so much easier. Plus, I like to do a lot of winter camping. So, of course, that comes with a lot of extra gear, including a heater and a propane tank sometimes if I want to be extra comfortable. As time has went on, I realized that the Hawk 250 trailer is super handy. And after having a trailer for the Hawk 250, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to go back. So that's going to be it for this video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out that description box below, and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace. <laughs>